Today, Sigma have announced a new super wide zoom lens, the Sigma 16 to 28 mm f2.8 DG DN Contemporary. But is this smaller, lighter, and affordable option better than the premium Sigma 14 to 24 mm f2.8 DG DN Art? Well, today, we're going to find out. In terms of size and weight, this new zoom lens is significantly smaller and lighter than its older sibling, mainly due to the fact that it's made almost entirely out of a composite plastic material, whilst the more premium 14 to 24 mm is made from a mixture of metal and composite plastics. In terms of features, both lenses include a dust and splash resistant design and a manual MF to AF switch, but the older 14 to 24 mm lens makes space for a customizable AF lock button too. One big difference between these two lenses is that the 16 to 28 mm has a detachable lens hood which can be removed to make way for a 72mm screw on filter. On the flip side the 14-24mm to has a bulbous front element with a fixed lens hood, meaning that your standard screw on filters really won't be much use here. Luckily there is a built in attachment for fixing a rear lens filter which is fine if you're a photographer but obviously for videographers who prefer to shoot with variable ND filters then this is probably not an ideal solution. In terms of price at launch this new lens is going to be around $400 cheaper than the existing art lens making it a much more affordable option for those shopping on a budget. So needless to say, when it comes to scoring, this new lens is going to pick up a point immediately for price. As for build, although this new lens is nicely put together, when compared side by side, the largely plastic design does feel less premium compared to the art lens. So I am going to give the point for build to the 14 to 24 millimeter lens in this round. Now, although this new lens doesn't come with a customizable button, in terms of general handling, I think the significant size and weight reduction alone makes it a much nicer lens to shoot with. Plus, you can also use your standard filters on this thing, meaning it's way more practical for videographers or hybrid shooters like myself so it grabs itself a well-earned point for handling. When it comes to autofocus in good lighting conditions both lenses are quick to focus with no signs of hunting. In low light conditions these lenses took a little while longer to lock on but they were still totally usable and none of them hunted wildly out of control. When shooting wide open in high speed continuous mode the vast majority of the images taken with these lenses were sharp and in focus with only a handful of them being marginally out of focus. So with very impressive performances overall both of these lenses deserve a point in this round. When shooting a moving target in video mode, both of these lenses struggled ever so slightly around the middle of the walk. Eventually though, they would quickly lock back on as George got a bit closer to the camera. When repeating this test at a faster pace, strangely, neither lens struggled this time and both were able to track George throughout the walk. As for AF noise, both of these lenses are generally very quiet. In manual focus mode, the dials on these lenses were responsive and smooth, making them a joy to use for focus pulls. Although there is a touch of focus breathing with both of these lenses, it really shouldn't be a turn off for most videographers. So again, with pretty much identical results, it's points all round. Now obviously with a wide angle lens, you're not going to be able to achieve nice big bokeh balls like you would expect with longer focal lens. But regardless, both of these lenses do provide nice round orbs across the majority of the frame. As for general bokeh quality, although it is still a very close result, I would go so far as to say that the new lens provides a slightly softer and less textured bokeh than the more expensive 14 to 24 mm which was slightly surprising. But ultimately, I think these results are just far too close to call an overall winner, so both of these lenses deserve a well-earned point in this round. In our lens flare test, both options do a pretty good job at protecting against flare and artifacting. And as I've already discussed, both of these lenses do come with lens hoods to help shade the front element in harsh lighting conditions. On a longitudinal chromatic aberration test, both of these lenses provide very clean looking results, though the new 16 to 28 mm does have a very small touch of colored fringing. When it comes to shooting with these lenses out in the real world, they are both an absolute joy to shoot with. Now, I will confess, when shooting portraits, I do tend to stay away from wide angle lenses because the distortion that they create just isn't that flattering for your subject. But despite this, I actually had a really fun time shooting with these lenses and I was really happy with the results I came away with. The biggest difference I noticed when switching between these two lenses during the shoot was the weight difference. This new lens is just so much lighter than the chunky 14 to 24 millimeter, which for me made it the more enjoyable of the two options to shoot with. If you're likely to favor the wide end of your zoom over the long end for shooting landscapes or architecture, then 
then the 14 to 24 millimeter does have the slight edge. Although on paper, the difference between 14 millimeters and 16 millimeters doesn't sound like it would make much of a difference. In reality, you can pack a lot more into the frame with the 14 millimeter end, as you can see from these two photos here, which were taken from the exact same spot. At the long end of the zoom, the 28 millimeter will allow you to punch into your image a little bit tighter than you can with the 24 millimeter focal length. In terms of crowning an overall winner for image quality, it is way too tough to pick an overall winner just by looking at these test images alone. So I'm gonna have to dive a little bit deeper and take a look at some test chart images. Shooting at the widest ends of these zooms at f2.8, both lenses suffer from severe barrel distortion, though the 16 to 28 millimeter also produces very dark vignetting at the corners of the frame. Zooming in, we can see that these lenses are practically identical when it comes to sharpness and contrast, both at the center and at the corners. At the 24 and 28 millimeter ends of these zooms, again, the results are very, very similar. Though at the corners, the new 16 to 28 millimeter is slightly sharper than the 14 to 24 millimeter. Shooting at these lenses' minimum focusing distances at the wide end, these lenses are incredibly close once again. However, at the long end of the zoom, the new 16 to 28 millimeter actually produces a much sharper result in comparison to the 14 to 24 millimeter, which is softer and has some colored fringing. So when it comes to scoring for image quality, it's incredibly tough to call an overall winner. Although the 16 to 28 millimeter does suffer from more longitudinal chromatic aberration than its rival, the 14 to 24 millimeter does produce noticeably softer results at the 24 millimeter end when shooting close up. So rather than just splitting hairs, I think the only fair thing to do really is to award both of these lenses a point for image quality as clearly they are just too closely matched to pick an overall winner. This means after tallying up the scores, the new 16 to 28 millimeter is the winner of this head-to-head -head contest, mainly due to it being significantly smaller, lighter, and cheaper than its rival, all whilst offering comparable AF performance and image quality, which is pretty damn impressive.